Hello and welcome back to What's Next. When Tesla first introduced its gigacasting tech, the reaction from many industry professionals and enthusiasts was overwhelmingly negative. In the comment sections of Inside EVs and other automotive websites, engineers and skeptics alike dismissed the idea of another one of Elon Musk's impractical and reckless innovations. Many people confidently argued that if such a process had been viable, established automakers like Audi or Toyota would have adopted it decades ago. The skepticism wasn't limited to written discussions. YouTube videos covering Tesla's new manufacturing approach were flooded with comments ridiculing the concept. Critics insisted that replacing hundreds of individual car parts with just a few massive castings would inevitably lead to a structural weakness, expensive repairs, and overall worse vehicle performance. Yet, despite all the doubt just a few years later, the automotive industry is rapidly shifting towards gigacasting, with several major manufacturers embracing the very technique they once dismissed. Toyota, Hyundai, Honda, and many Chinese automakers have either already implemented or are in the process of integrating gigacasting into their vehicle production lines. Honda in particular has taken a significant step toward installing six massive gigacasting machines at its Anna engine plant in the US, which was once widely regarded as a risky experiment has now become a defining advancement in car minor manufacturing. Honda recently confirmed its acquisition of 6,000-ton high-pressure die-casting machines from Bueller, a Swiss manufacturing company known for producing state-of-the-art industrial casting equipment. While some automakers use the term mega-casting instead of gigacasting, the principle remains the same. The Honda's investment in these machines is aimed at accelerating its electric vehicle production strategy in the US, making a major shift in how the company plans to compete in the EV market. The first vehicle models to benefit from its new production method will now be the Acura RSX SUV, as well as two upcoming Honda electric models, the Honda Saloon and the Honda SUV, both set to debut at CES 2025. A crucial part of Honda's plan involves producing intelligent power unit housings using gigacasting. These large die-cast aluminum structures will serve as the core framework for Honda and Acura's upcoming EVs. After being cast at the Anna engine plant, these massive structural components will be transported to Honda's Marysville facility, where they will be integrated into the final vehicle assemblies. This shift toward large-scale casting is expected to satisfy production, reducing costs and improving vehicle performance, addressing many of the challenges associated with traditional manufacturing. One of the biggest advantages of gear casting is its ability to dramatically reduce the number of parts and vehicle structure. Historically, automobile manufacturing required hundreds of individual components to be welded, stamped, glued, and bolted together to form the car's chassis. By contrast, gigacasting can replace between 70 to 100 separate parts with a single die-cast component. If applied to both the front and rear sections of a car, this can lead to a reduction of about 200 parts per vehicle. Toyota, for example, has stated that it plans to reduce its total part count from 300 to just two, highlighting the scale of transformation that this technology enables. The shift toward gigacasting isn't just about reducing complexity. It also brings major cost savings. Fewer components mean fewer production steps, lower material waste, and increased efficiency on the assembly line. This allows manufacturers to build cars faster with a lower cost, a crucial advantage in the increasingly competitive EV market. Tesla, which pioneered the widespread use of large die-casting machines, has already demonstrated these benefits. It's currently the fastest automaker in the world in terms of vehicle production time, with a new car rolling off production lines every 30 seconds. Another key advantage of gigacasting is its impact on vehicle weight and structural integrity. Since casted components eliminate the need for multiple welded or riveted joints, this results in a structure that is lighter, stronger, and more resistant to a failure in a crash. Toyota, which has criticized Tesla's use of gigacasting, later reverse engineered the Model Y and was reportedly amazed by the engineering approach. The company's engineers called Tesla's structural design genius, making a dramatic change in how traditional automakers view large-scale casting. With so many advantages, it's no surprise that Giga casting has become an industry-wide trend. In addition to Tesla, Honda, and Toyota, other major automakers such as Hyundai and Xpeng have also begun integrating this tech into their production lines. Some Chinese manufacturers, including Xiaomi, are even taking steps further to by developing Giga casting machines that are twice as large as Tesla's, reaching 12,000 tons of pressure. These massive machines are capable of producing even larger single-die castings, further streamlining production and reducing costs. 
Despite its clear benefits, gigacasting has faced several challenges along the way. In the early days of Tesla's implementation, casting defects were a significant issue. Problems such as uneven cooling, warping with metal deformation led to high rejection rates. Tesla had to refine the alloy composition and optimize the cooling process to ensure consistent quality. Honda has taken a similar approach by first testing its gigacasting process in Japan, adjusting variables like molding temperatures, casting pressure, and cooling speed to achieve the best possible results before implementing this technology in the US. One of the biggest concerns that critics initially raised was the repairability of gigacasted vehicles. Many feared that if a large single-piece casting were damaged in a crash, the entire car would be scrapped. However, real-world testing has proven that this isn't the case. In fact, damaged cast parts can often be repaired or often replaced just like traditional vehicle components, making the issue far less problematic than originally assumed. Thousands of gigacrafted Teslas have been successfully repaired, further disproving the argument that these vehicles are disposable. Another hurdle in implementing gigacasting is the infrastructure required to support such large-scale machinery. Installing these massive die-casting presses requires extensive modifications of factory floors, including the reinforcement of foundations to accommodate their weight and operational forces. Honda, for example, had to replace support pylons buried 80 feet deep beneath its Anna engine plant to ensure the stability of its 31-ton die-casting machines. The scale of these upgrades underscore the significance of investments required to transition to this new manufacturing method. The future of the auto industry is now undeniably tied to gigacasting. What once seemed like an overly ambitious and unrealistic idea is now becoming the standard for vehicle production. Automakers that fail to adopt this tech within the next five years risk falling behind, unable to compete on cost, efficiency, and production speed. Legacy car manufacturers that continue relying on traditional methods will struggle to keep up with companies like Tesla, Xpeng, and Xiaomi, who are setting new benchmarks for production efficiency. With gigacasting machines continuing to increase in size and efficiency, the next few years will less likely bring even more dramatic advancements in vehicle design and manufacturing. The era of assembling cars from hundreds of individual components is coming to an end, replaced by highly efficient, large-scale die-casting presses. Honda's recent adoption of six massive gigacasting machines is yet another sign that the industry is fully embracing this transformation. The shift toward gigacasting is no longer a question of if, but when. Those who once doubted its viability have been proven wrong, and today, automakers that fail to adapt will inevitably struggle to compete in the new era of automotive manufacturing.